So, good morning, b -Sides. First of all, thank you to the team from b -Sides Munich for the organization and for giving me the chance to speak here today. Welcome to Master of Puppets, how to temper the EDR. My name is Daniel. I'm the founder of the company InfoSec Tirol, with which I mainly focus on offensive security service on Windows. And I also spend a lot of my time in researching, learning, and in the area of antivirus products, CDR products, and the Windows internals. Today, we take a look at the Mitre subtechnic impaired defenses, disable or modifying tools, and we focus on how can we disable the main functionalities from an EDR by targeted control tempering of specific key components from them. But we want to achieve this without relying on an uninstalled password or token, uninstall software, uninstalling the product generally, or by using the Windows Security Center. I would like to point out when I speak about EDR systems in that presentation, I always refer to products which are also in cloud, including an antivirus module, so an EPP EDR combination. Also, I would like to point out it's also only my personal research, my personal experience, and the shown strategy or concept applies to multiple products on Windows. In the first step, we try to get a better understanding from the different components from EDRs in user space and in kernel space. We learn a little bit about their functionality and important how the relationship between the different components in user space and kernel space. In the second step, we want to use the gained knowledge to find a way or to find more or less the key element, um, depending on the product, to permanently disable the main functionality from an EDR and permanently get rid of uh, prevention by the antivirus module and permanently get rid of detections and telemetry footprint, host isolation, real-time response, and EDR sensor recovery feature by the EDR module. So we have big plans. <laughs> At the end of the presentation, we should more or less able to, depending on the product, to disable the EDR. So this presentation is not about zero days. Um, it's more about learning a little bit about the Windows internals and how do EDR products work on Windows. So there can be uh, some situations where it also be possible to do some activities in an unprivileged user way, but normally you need a privileged user uh, in high integrity or system integrity level. But despite um, Everybody which has fired around with EDRs knows that despite you have a privileged user, uh, most well-known EDR products can still be very annoying and be a problem. Um, normally, it is not possible to simply uninstall the product because if the blue team has done his homework correctly, um, you have to know the uninstall password to uninstall the product. And as mentioned in the intro, we uh, want to achieve this uh, without relying on an uninstalled password. So imagine the following scenario. You have landed a successful fish and you were also able to escalate your local privileges. In my case, I was able to use the print time exploit to escalate to um, system integrity context. And by having a look at the process structure of the compromised machine, I saw that there's an other interesting user session open. So believe it or not, in my case, it was one from the domain admins. And I knew, okay, uh, could be Maybe it could be easy to get credentials by dumping Delsa's process or to impersonate as domain admin by token stealing. But the problem was that I uh, created uh, many alerts in the admin console from the product. The blue team was informed and I get isolated from the machine. And that was the starting point more or less uh, from my journey, uh, digging deeper into the Windows internals and EDR products and find a way to disable the main functionality from them. So we start with the user space component of a EDR and have a look at EDR processes. Normally EDR or the processes from EDR products are executed as process protected light processes. This means that uh, even if you have achieved system integrity context, it shouldn't be possible to simply terminate the process. But in the meantime, there are a few ways how we can deal with uh, PPL processes from red team side. So 
uh, one possibility can be to use the more or less the concept of a driver with, a, with a, an other access vulnerability like the MSE Afterburner RT Core 64 driver. So when we have a look at that picture, the first step we try to escalate our unprivileged user to a local privileged user in high integrity or um, system integrity context. And by this, we should have the privilege to load a driver on Windows. And the, by loading the RT Core 64 driver, we get also right access to kernel space because of the null duckle access vulnerability. And um, compared to user space in kernel space on Windows, there is no isolation between the different code sections. This means that theoretically, we would have whole ac uh, access to the whole access from kernel space. In this case, we will use the vulnerable driver to attach to the e-process structure from the PPL EDR process, uh, and we temporarily patch the PPL flag and can then use uh, different kind of tools to terminate the not longer protected process. So for example, PPL killer uses the RT Core 64 driver in his code, or Mimikatz uh, brings his own device driver. Also an interesting way, depending on the product, it can work if you are able to execute Process Hacker in a privileged way. Uh, depending on the product, it is possible to directly terminate uh, the PPL process in the system session without removing the PPL flag in the first step. The conclusion of process tampering is that um, it, there are ways to temper the process, to, to terminate the processes, but from my observation, this termination was always just temporary. So uh, if you terminate the process a few seconds later, or at least a minute later, the process gets restarted and the EDR is, is back there. Because of this, in the next step, we take a look at the user space component and a closer look at EDR services. So we have to identify the service which is connected to the protected process and the protected service uh, and the protected process more or less builds together the user space component. But similar to protected processes, even if you have achieved system integrity on Windows, it's not simply possible to pause, stop or disable a protected service. But important, uh, in, uh, also important in our situation, when we have a look at the recovery tab from the protected service, we can see that the service is the component which is responsible for restarting the process, the PPL process after terminating. Conclusion on services. Um, we, we learned a little bit about the relationship between protected processes and protected services. Uh, similar to processes, it is, it is not possible, also not possible to temporarily uh, disable the service. Um, but um, maybe we can use or find a way to uh, still disable the service. Because of this, in the next step, we take a look at the user space component and EDR registry keys. So you have to identify the EDR rec key from the user space component. Normally you can find them on the control set, uh, current control set services. And there are two interesting entries. So um, launch protected and start entry. Because time is a little bit sh short, we will focus on the start entry. And by the start entry, we can have influence on the initialization behavior from the protected service. This means if we would be able to change the, end, the value for the entry, for the start entry, from the value 2, which is equal to autoload, to the value 4, which is equal to disabled, it should be possible to disable the protected service and furthermore, the user space component from the EDR. But the problem, similar to processes and services from the EDR, even in system integrity, it is not possible with most products. And Depending on the product, when you try to temper the rec key, you will create an alert in the web console. This was, this was the problem in my journey and uh, the reason why it was isolated from the compromised machine. So the interim status, at the moment, we are not uh, really able to permanently disable the EDR or the user space component, but we learned a little bit about the 
uh, relationship between the different components in user space. And we see that the rec key could be more or less the key element by changing the value for the start entry to permanently disable the user space component. But at the moment, it is not possible because the rec key uh, or the, the keys are protected by a temper protection a mechanism by the EDR. Because of this, in the fourth step, we make our first step into kernel land and have a look at kernel callback routines. So since the introduction of kernel uh, patch protection, AK patch guard, it is not longer possible, uh, officially possible, for uh, ER vendors to set their hooks in kernel space. So they are forced in user space to use user space API hooking. But despite patch guard, they can use in kernel space a mechanism which is called kernel callback routines and register different kind of callbacks to realize different kind of tasks in user space. So for example, they can use the process notify routine to register and realize uh, telemetry collection in context of process creations. Also, they can use the process notify routine to realize user space DLL injection and furthermore realize user space API hooking. But more important in our situation now, kernel callback routines by EDR products can also be used to protect their own registry keys. So this is more or less could be the, the key element for the, uh, for the temporal protection for, rec for the registry keys. Um, in this case, the product is using the CM register callback function. But we will see in our first uh, pre-recorded demo, because I have to um, blur every sensitive information, we will see that um, not just the CM register callback can be used, they also use other callbacks to uh, protect their rec keys. And in the first demo, we try to patch the process notify callback, temper the rec key, disable the user space component, and have a look at the impact. So for first plausible check, because at least we want to dump, okay. Okay, that looks better. Uh, for first plausible check, to see that the antivirus component and DDR is completely configured, and at least we want to get credentials from the ELSAS process, we execute the pre-compiled version from Mimikatz, which you can find on GitHub. So we execute it, and we should see that you get prevented by the antivirus module, and the file gets deleted. In the next step, we make a plausible, short plausible check in context of um, the temporal protection. So um, at the beginning, we try to uh, terminate the protected process uh, by executing process explorer and system integrity context, but we are not allowed to do this. Also in case of the protected service, um, even in system integrity, we get an access denied. And if we try to temper the value for the start entry to disable the user space component to the value of four. We also get an access tonight. And depending on the product, now we will have created an alert and you get with a high probability isolated from the machine by the blue team. Because of this, we use a very nice um, POC, which you can find on GitHub. It is called Cheeky Blinder. It's not from my side. Um, I called it in this case, Paddy.dxe. And uh, in the first uh, step, we will uh, use that POC to load the uh, driver with the vulnerability, the RT Core 64 driver, to get access to kernel space. So we load the driver, the driver is initialized, and in the next step, we list all the registered process notify routines um, on the machine. And the blurred one on the lower side is our uh, routine from the EDR product. In the next step, we will use the POC to temporarily patch the callback. And 
And after reopening the registry, it should now be possible to change the value for the start entry and to disable the user space component because temporal protection is now not longer uh, active. So we change the value to four, which is equal to disabled, and we have to reboot the machine. After the reboot, we see at the lower right side that now the EDR product is no longer registered in the Windows Security Center. And also by having a look at the structure from Process Explorer, we now see no longer blurred sections because um, there are no longer uh, processes by the user space component. Also, if we check the status from the user space component, we will see that the, uh, the service is now uh, stopped. So it looks very nice. Maybe we have, until now, reached all of our goals. But this is not the case. Because after the reboot, we have a few problems. We again uh, list the registered callbacks on the machine. And we will see that all the previously patched callbacks are re-registered again. This means in case of prevention and detection based on kernel callback routines and furthermore, Windows user-based uh, user API hooking, we again have the problem of prevention, detection, and especially telemetry footprinting. So again, when we execute Mimic cuts, we get again prevented. And despite the user space component is disabled, we still have the problem that the blue team can use the isolate function to isolate our compromised machine. So in a few seconds, we will see that we lose connection to our compromised target. So what's the conclusion from the first demo? We saw that we can more or less use a concept of the vulnerable device driver to get access to kernel space, um, remove or patch the respective callback, temper the rec key, change the value for the start entry to four, and by restarting the machine, we can permanently disable the user space component. But we also saw that only disabling the user space component do not really have a strong impact in reaching our previously defined goals. And no matter after, um, if you have rebooted the machine and you would uh, again patch all the callbacks from the EDR, you would still have the, uh, the problem that um, host isolation, uh, the recovery feature, and um, the last one, <laughs> yeah, uh, the, the features which the Blue Team can use in the web console is still active. So the biggest problem is that Despite the user space component is disabled and you patch all the callbacks, you still have the problem with the host isolation. Even if you will not do a reboot and you were, um, you just want to temporarily patch the callback, um, you still have the problem that um, also your, your, your host can still get isolated by the blue team. So not really if, uh, efficient from uh, this point um, and we have to take our last step. In the final step, we take a look at the EDR mini filter driver. And the mini filter driver is the uh, component which is responsible for, in general, registering callbacks um, from the EDR. And that is all, was also the problem why even if the user space component is disabled, the mini filter driver is a separate component, is still active, and but this, after the reboot, the callbacks get uh, re-registered again. But the good thing is that the mini filter has its own registry key and um, has a similar structure to the user space component. This means that depending on the product, the uh, mini filter driver can be more or less the key element to um, permanently disable the main functionalities and get rid of prevention, uh, host isolation, real-time response, and EDR recovery feature. To check this out, we will have a look at our second demo where we try to temper the mini filter driver and permanently get rid of prevention detection, uh, telemetry collection, and so on. So
So we start at the point where we have stop. Remember, we get isolated from the machine. So we will lift the containment and get back connection to our compromised target. And very important, now we uh, want to re-enable the user space component in the first step and only disable the mini filter driver and to, and, uh, because we want to check what is the impact if we only disable the mini filter. So we patch the, uh, re list the callbacks again. We see that the process notify routine is still there. We query the user space component service, which is currently stopped. And we check the status from the mini filter from the EDR. And we see that the mini filter is still running. So we open the registry and re-enable the user space component by changing the value uh, from the start entry back from, uh, from 4 to the value 2. But we're not allowed. Why? Remember, we, have did, we did a reboot, so we have to, to patch the callback one time again and reopen the registry. So we patch it again. The process notify routine, reopen the registry. We now re-enable in the first step the user space component. Set the value back to the value 2. And then we go to the mini filter rec key and change the value to 4, which is equal to disabled, reboot the machine. And after the reboot, we see that now the uh, EDR is still not um, registered in the uh, Windows Security Center, but then when we have now a um, look at the Process Explorer, we see again blurred sections. The reason for this is I have to blur it because um, there are again user space component processes active. We uh, query the status from the user space service. We see that the service is now again running, but the mini filter driver is now stopped. And at least we check the impact by disabling the mini filter. We see that no longer callbacks are registered. We try to isolate the machine again. It looks like the temper protection is no longer active. So we can change the value however we want without creating a detection or creating a footprint based on telemetry. And finally, we can execute mimic cuts and the credentials very relaxed, I would say. <laughs> Isolation is still not happening, so it looks like that isolating the machine is no longer working. Okay, so what's the conclusion from the second demo? We saw that compared to uh, disabling the user space component, uh, depending also on the product, uh, disabling the mini filter has a much stronger impact in case of uh, reaching our goals uh, and to permanently uh, disable main functionalities from the EDR and uh, permanently get rid of prevention by the antivirus module, uh, detection, footprinting, host isolation, and so on. Um, at the end of the presentation, I would like to point out that, in my opinion, this is not uh, really based on the vulnerability. Uh, more, it's uh, based on the concept from the Windows architecture. And I think every uh, vendor, uh, excluding Microsoft, has to play on the same rules um, on Windows. So, many thanks for your attention. Cool, thank you very much. Um, we have some time for questions. Any questions? Yeah, please just line up at the, at the mic. And whoever is faster. <laughs> testing, testing, seems to be working. 
Uh, your almost last sentence was every vendor except Microsoft has to play by the same rules. Yeah. <laughs> Could you go through the except Microsoft thing? <laughs> yeah, I think the, um, the difference is compared to third party vendors that um, Microsoft is, I think, not really only forced to go in user space. So, because since the introduction of Patch Guard, officially it's not allowed. Also, if even uh, or maybe if you use a, a patch card bypass, then you can also go in kernel space. But I think that um, from my experiences, uh, Microsoft has um, a very deep or deeper visibility um, because it, it sits, uh, it has more uh, visibility into kernel space uh, compared to other vendors. So, uh, follow up: Have you looked into uh, cutting them off? Or their EDR products? Do, do you need additional kernel space disabling capabilities? Or um, no, at the moment I um, I have only while researching in the area of um, mini filters. Um, also, I also write a, a blog post about Elon drivers. So um, I had a look on different components. Um, but not on ETVs when you mean this one, <laughs> ETW. <laughs> it uh, will be, be the topic for my next uh, project. <laughs> Looking forward to it, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So how, how do you think they would go about to fix this? Um, do you think there's um, any probability um, within the um, kernel space or from the isolation perspective? And do you think Windows 11 could fix this? Is there anything um, on the way with um, TPM uh, 2.0 to fix this? And uh, what, what do you think, how hard would it be to, um, for somebody interested in pen testing to learn this? Um, do you think there, you could make a lab about this or anybody learn this or is it just um, too oversimplified here? Um, no, you can definitely yeah. learn it. I also used it by myself. Um, for sure, you have to be very sensitive because when you do a failure in the kernel space, you will create a blue screen of death. Um, but um, if you know the product very well, um, you can use it depending on the machine. So maybe when you are acting a very sensitive machine, it is not um, maybe good when you do this. Um, what you can do about, um, I could observe that well-known products are blacklisting, uh, begin to blacklist the drivers which have vulnerabilities. This is one way, but uh, it is possible to use different POCs to maybe flip some bytes and get bypass uh, by, that by that detections. Um, another possibility would be um, there is a software vendor on the market. I will not say the name, but um, they focus on a mechanism to get... Um, which is based on the WEFI, uh, WEFI um, variable. And um, the products have the possibility to include this code into their code. And by they will realize when there uh, is um, something changed or tempered, um, they can um, re-enable it or repair it in, um, on the machine. And do you think um, Windows 11 will fix something about that? Or with TPM, is there any way a vendor could facilitate it to protect um, in, 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 in any kind? It's a good question. So at the moment, I have not a deeper look at Windows 11. Um, but I think uh, generally um, with the drivers, um, you only can use drivers which are released uh, for July 2015. Afterwards, it is more... Um, it's, it's harder, but there are still drivers which you can be, uh, can be used. Um, on Windows 11, I can't say too much because I have too less experience at the moment. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Any more questions? Okay, cool. Thank you very much. Very interesting. Thank you.